Russia stopped an attempt by the Ukrainian special services to organize a hijack of a Russian 2-22M3 strategic bomber abroad, local media reported, citing Federal Security Service. TASS news agency quoted an FSB statement as saying that the agency also found the involvement of NATO special services in preparing and implementing the operation. The Ukrainian intelligence planned to recruit a Russian military pilot for a monetary reward and the promise of Italian citizenship to persuade him to fly and land the missile carrier in Ukraine, the statement said. During the operation, the Russian counterintelligence also received information that helped to deliver a fire strike at a Ukrainian air base, it said. In the summer of 2022, the FSB claimed to have thwarted a similar operation orchestrated by Ukrainian special services. According to the intelligence agency, Ukrainian military intelligence officers, allegedly acting under orders from their political leaders, attempted to recruit Russian military pilots by offering them monetary compensation and the promise of EU citizenship. The 2-22M3 is a long-range supersonic missile carrier bomber with variable sweep wings designed to strike sea and land targets with guided missiles and bombs. It can carry both nuclear and conventional bombs and missiles. The operational capabilities of the 2-22M3 are extensive, allowing it to perform strategic bombing, maritime strike, and reconnaissance missions. It can operate in all weather conditions, day or night, and can penetrate heavily defended airspace. The aircraft's long-range and high-speed performance make it a formidable asset for power projection and deterrence. Corridors to be opened for F-16s, Le Monde assessed ATA CMS strikes on Russian targets in Crimea. Following the arrival of US ATA CMS long-range missiles, the Ukrainian army has begun to destroy Russian air defenses in temporarily occupied Crimea as part of a campaign to block its logistics routes, Le Monde reports. It appears that despite Russia's increasing pressure on the eastern and northern fronts, the Ukrainian army, in accordance with President Volodymyr Zelensky's instructions, is pursuing the goal of making Crimea a liability rather than an asset. A rear base, a center, an outpost. The peninsula remains the most important part of Russia's military position in Ukraine and Moscow's most valuable prize. But its relative geographic isolation could also become its Achilles heel. Closing the narrow logistical routes linking Crimea to Russia would make the situation untenable for the troops stationed there as well as for the units holding the southern regions of Kherson, Zaporizhia and Donetsk, the publication says. According to the Ukrainian Army's Center for Strategic Communications, between mid-April and mid-June, about 15 S-300 and S-400 air defense systems were damaged in Crimea. It is noted that such an obvious vulnerability can be explained by the fact that ATA CMS quasi-ballistic missiles launched from HIMARS or M270 multiple launch rocket systems are capable of deviating from the standard arc trajectory making rapid turns and course corrections. They are capable of hitting the S-400, which was not originally designed for a serious anti-ballistic role, said Federico Bossari, a researcher at the Center for European Policy Analysis in Washington. According to Thibao Fouye, an employee of the Institute for Strategic and Defense Studies, the Ukrainian armed forces have been able to stabilize the front, but they do not have the ability to go on the offensive. So they are trying to act in other ways, and Crimea is the axis that offers the greatest opportunities. Philip O'Brien, professor of strategic studies at the University of St. Andrews in Edinburgh, added that all these losses on the peninsula could gradually force Moscow to deploy increasingly expensive and vulnerable resources in Crimea to protect its lines of communication. It is also possible that this campaign of methodical destruction of Russian air defenses in Crimea could eventually open corridors for F-16s to operate in great depth. 
Let us recall that, as Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder recently stated, the U.S. position regarding the use of long-range weapons for strikes against the Russian Federation has not changed. Our policy is that the long-range weapons that we provide to Ukraine are intended for use within the sovereign territory of Ukraine. When asked whether this concerned occupied Crimea, Ryder recalled that the peninsula is part of Ukraine.